With all the noise surrounding 5G, you could be forgiven for thinking that commercial service was just around the corner. Yet the reality is, we're at least five years away from being able to use these new 5G services. However, if we are to hit the 2020 deadline, then research work must begin in earnest now. And here at the University of Surrey in the UK, academics have partnered with vendors and operators to create the 5G Innovation Centre, which aims to be the world's leading research centre for 5G technologies. The University of Surrey for a long time has hosted uh, what was the largest academic research group in Europe in mobile communications. The centre started as a 36 million programme, 24 million from partners, 12 million from the Higher Education Funding Council, uh, and that's what gave us the initial impetus to, for the building and for the uh, original concept of the 5G test bed. It would allow uh, companies to actually go out and test 5G IC equipment in the real environment. Now, uh, what's happened since that initial proposal, that initial proposal went into government, is that uh, the programme's expanded um, and we now have 58 million. The work's been going on um, around about two years, 18 months to two years. Um, it was felt that this was something where we needed to have a, a, a bespoke building, something that would act as a, an iconic centre, physical centre for the activity. Clearly, by definition, an awful lot of activity going on through networks, an awful uh, lot of uh, activity going on remotely, but to have that building and most importantly, where industry partners can physically come and sit alongside the academics. And we hope to see um, uh, in time uh, perhaps more facilities uh, physically situated around the 5G building. It's something we've been discussing with the government where smaller companies, SMEs, startups, can also be close to and physically interact with the key research element. We are going to have a test bed of at least 41 uh, small cells uh, at door and about six, seven indoor test bed, uh, access points, uh, three macro cells. All together will cover an area of about four kilometers squared. This is the radio test bed. And with this radio test bed will be connected to cloud infrastructure provided by one of our partners, Fujitsu and it will be connected to core network infrastructure provided by one of our partner, again, Vodafone in Newbury, about 70 kilometers away from here. So we will have end-to-end -end testbed, initially starting with the advanced version of 4G, and over the time, we will implement the 5G specific technologies on the radio side, on the network side, and intelligence side, I, I mentioned. This currently is the world's only open test bed. Uh, obviously the companies have their own test beds but, but they're absolutely kept confidential of course for their own uh, purposes and that means that they can't really engage with each other in terms of how global standards will be set for this very complex technology. So the 5G Innovation Centre provides uh, a means where, where these uh, potentially competitive companies can work together under uh, a very trusted environment with very clear rules about intellectual property to develop future standards and systems. And then of course, um, uh, in terms of the technical capability, uh, this is the only centre in the world that can offer a full end-to-end -end test across the whole range of 5G technologies. A crucial part of the setup was to create um, a vehicle uh, structure that was able to deal with the fact that obviously we have a, a number of very big corporates, each with their own commercial strategy. So if you're developing joint research, you have to have a way of ensuring that each partner can get access to the intellectual property that's arising in a fair and equitable fashion. And you also have to be uh, sure that you're also able to offer that intellectual property on reasonable conditions to partners outside of the uh, 5GIC. So it's a, as a, a standard thing to do in these circumstances is to create a company purely to handle uh, that process, purely to house the intellectual property. So we've set up a, um, uh, a legal company, um, 5GIC IP Limited, and uh, that company will be responsible for housing uh, all of the intellectual property that um, uh, arises from the research. And there are specific rules governing 
how that intellectual property then is apportioned to partners involved in the research. So it's a very, very important part of the structure of the 5G Innovation Centre. We are not doing the research on our own. We are working very closely with our industrial partners. And the uh, information from the activities going on in the rest of the world, uh, our industry partners will help us, as well as our own researchers have to always see and compare what sort of technology emerges so we, we have a good understanding of those technologies. We have set up uh, extensive um, simulators for the link level, for the system level, for the network level that is flexible enough to test any new technology that emerges as well as our own technologies uh, in a very short time. When standardization starts in first quarter or probably in middle of 2016, we are all prepared to start contributing as well as analyzing and evaluating other uh, candidate technologies that's taken to the standards. We have already set ourselves up by uh, our industrial members. There's a task force that it will look through our technologies we are developing, shortlist them, and uh, our industrial members will take all this to the standardization. This, the task force is led by Telefonica O2. We have um, a, a special test license from Ofcom uh, for, the, for the purpose of testing here. Spectrum allocation really is uh, a torturously difficult thing to, uh, to get right. Um, and there isn't a simple answer to that. Uh, suffice to say that the, the configuration of our facility here will allow us to deal with um, any activity across any range of frequencies. And we're working uh, with government to help to try to define how spectrum might be allocated in the future. But um, I think um, it's one of those situations where if you were to look at the requirements of 5G, nobody would start from where we are now, um, be, you know, obviously because all the historical sort of constraints that there were in the past. And we just have to then make sure that the system will do the best it can over the spectrum that's eventually allocated. So that does involve more work, it involves the equipment being more intelligent, um, but that's part of the uh, practical process that we're going through here. It's important to demonstrate that these technologies perform what the theory says uh, before we take it to the standardization. So we, we are exploring all these different technology through advanced simulation techniques we are doing, mathematical analysis, as well as proof of concept. We have six research work areas in which we produce novel research ideas. Work area seven is about uh, test bed and proof of concepts. So we get um, selected research ideas and then these selected um, topics will be implemented for the proof of concept and test. One platform you're seeing here is our air interface platform where we can implement a physical layer and air interface and 5G waveforms. And we have also equipments such as channel emulators. This is a proof of concept of one of 5G waveforms, which is um, FBMC. Um, and you can see uh, the spectrum of FPMC from hardware implemented on the hardware. We are looking at the air interface extensively. We are looking at, when we say air interface, it's not only just a physical layer, but it is the MAC layer protocols as well. We are looking at the intelligence in the network, in the device, and, uh, and we are exploiting software-defined network technologies for the network management and network agility and we are looking at new uh, signaling architecture uh, for any session setup for mobility patterns. So bring more intelligence into 5G system. Uh, and all these techniques that we develop, we test using simulation and mathematical analysis. It's very important for us to have a means by which we can characterize uh, and get an idea of how the radio is propagating from a, a transmitting uh, element such as a, a base station through to a uh, other receiving element such as a mobile device. We have a, a receiver box here which is connected to a laptop 
uh, and also a transmitter box. Uh, and the, the particular device is designed so that it will uh, measure the propagation from many different transmit and receive antennas and we will plot uh, data like this where we can for each sample get the impulse response which will capture not only the direct path that is going from the transmitter to receiver but in a real urban environment you've got lots of um, buildings uh, and other items such as vehicles which we call scatterers and they will cause reflected paths with later time delays to also arrive and this is exactly capturing all of those all at once uh, which is very important for working out how um, our channels characterized over a wide bandwidth. We have filed more than 10 patents in the last year. One of uh, the major breakthrough technologies we have done, we believe that we have solved the problem of the massive MIMO and interference, which acts as a bottleneck to the capacity and spectrum utilization that we expect. Uh, we filed that patent and we, in our simulation environment, with 1,000 antennas by 1,000 antennas, uh, the technology can give us speed of 0.8 terabits per second in only 100 megahertz bandwidth. Uh, and we want to test this technology as part of our test bed. In, uh, hopefully we'll have some results by um, probably towards the end of 2017. We have been extensively involved in definition of 4G through European Union funded projects like it's called Winner and Winner Plus. European Commission has taken a progressive step forward. In 2012 allocated more than 1.4 billion euros of funding for European industry and academia to, to develop 5G specific technologies under the program of 5G PPP, Public Private Partnership. Uh, the first group of projects will be uh, starting towards probably before the end of this year and will carry on until uh, 2020. It's a bit of an overused word, but people talk about ecosystems. And if you look at um, well, some of the best universities in the UK, to Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial, and certainly you know, MIT, Harvard, Stanford in, in the States, you, what they have is this, this ongoing ecosystem, which is about undergraduates uh, being inspired by uh, successful um, academics and entrepreneurs, going through, doing PhDs, doing MSCs, and uh, being the next generation that will inspire. And I think this is something that, again, outside the top UK institutions, the UK has not done so well. And I think uh, facilities like 5GIC really offer that chance to be a nucleus for an, a long-term community, a long-term ecosystem uh, of innovation and invention uh, that's really sustainable. Our ambition is to test 5G technologies uh, by in the first quarter of 2018. Hopefully we'll be the first in the world. Telecom TV will be closely following developments here at the 5G IC as part of our ongoing Towards 5G series as we track the developments of this groundbreaking evolution in mobile communications. This is Guy Daniels for Telecom TV at the 5G Innovation Centre.